In this episode of GX Nina, we spent two days, three nights in Chamonix climbing the monstrous mountains, exploring the town, and taking time to slow down and appreciate all that life has to offer. We love train reservations. Getting from Paris to Chamonix was a long journey. After some train delays, we found ourselves starving and stuck in an empty town just 30 minutes away from our Airbnb. It was nice to finally get some fresh air, but we were more than ready to be done with our travel day. Instead of 4K, 24 frames per second, 1080, 24 frames. Vlog mode, less data. Once we got into town, we went right for the cheapest food option, kebabs. What did you get? A taco. Just a lot like a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell the difference. With full tummies now, we headed to the Airbnb where Jordan made an astonishing discovery before bed. One thing I've never seen before my entire life, pink toilet paper. The next day, we slept in a bit to recover from our long travel day before getting our first glance at the mountains outside our room. We were in awe. Our cheap little Airbnb view took our breath away. Look at it. Ooh, cool. My favorite part of that was the heater right here. It looks really so warm. We couldn't stop staring. Sure, this is a pretty interesting uh, wall adapter you brought here. Yeah, <laughs> it fits everywhere. Really, Type M, I, I don't even know that I've heard of that. Type M, you've heard of it. You've used one too, <laughs> it's in South Africa. What are we doing today? We are going to hike and do some via Ferraris around Mount Blanc. Yeah. We considered riding the Aguil de Midi, Chamonix's most popular attraction, but the hefty price tag scared us away. How much does that thing cost, Nate? Well, I mean, don't fact check me on this. I need to fact check myself. I saw $70 per yeah, adult. I was gonna say $75 a person. Yeah. So we looked up a bunch of sports shops in Chamonix, and we walked in and said we need to be a product here. And they gave it to us, and it was only at the very end that they're like, yeah, we're actually closed like for the next two weeks. But like, we'll come in tomorrow to like get your stuff. We'll rent it out to you right now. All that to say, they were super nice to us. Our next stop was to grab some breakfast and lunch supplies. The most intense bakery I've ever seen. <laughs> More pain bread. Yeah, I think that's what the bread's called in French. I like so much it hurts. <laughs> We then hopped on a town bus to take us to the base of the hike. During the peak season, climbers have the option of taking a chairlift to the base of the climb, but since we visited in the off season, the chairlift was closed and hiking was our only option. You think we can do it at 2.30? Do you think we'll beat it or will we lose? I think we will tie it or lose. Hiking is definitely more work, but rewarding because we got the climb almost completely to ourselves. The journey was steep and long, so we took plenty of breaks to enjoy the view along the way. Since it was fall, the leaves were changing colors, but the valley was still green from all the snow melt. This was some much needed nature after our city days in Paris. Once we were almost there, we took a quick lunch break at the ski resort chairlift to assemble our pesty turcos. We were at the top of the hike for some chairlifts, getting some shade, eating some lunch, and it only took us two hours and nine minutes, 20 minutes faster than what that sign said. Just finished enjoying our baguettes with this awesome view. Now we're gonna go to the base of the Via Prada and start climbing. Almost there. <laughs> Good stuff. This was gonna be Jordan's first time ever doing a Via Prada climb, so Nina switched into guide mode. These are them. They're double locking orange gates facing opposite ways. Good, George, good. You know what's funny? The, the orange helmet that we wore in Jackson is the guiding helmet, and the blue helmet was actually the guest helmet. Uh, yeah, it's pretty embarrassing that I'm better than her. But just before we got going, Jordan and I got a little distracted. He's so far. Lock him in. I'm getting him. I totally got him. All right. I can't see if I got him, but I know I got him. All right, let's go. <sighs> You're getting them. Oh yeah, I got him. Oh yeah, bro. I you got him. him. Nailed him. I nailed him so hard. <laughs> Nina was ready to go, so we had a little catching up to do. Clip early and often. Yes, sir. Look at look at Jord. First time via Ferrata, just leading the charge. Jordan was really starting to get the hang of it, so we let him lead. Things were all fun and games until we started to sweat. Then disaster struck. I have sunscreen in my mouth. I do too. No sunscreen in my eyes now. I have it too, bro. It's like 
tweaking me out. Fortunately, Jordan and I are big buff boys and overcame the sunscreen ouchies. We started the climb as boys and ended as men. Look at these peaks. Most insane climb. I was having a hard time getting good shots of Nina, so I went in front. I was not ready for that. You did that way too fast. Oh, look at him. He's chilling. Nina, can you? <laughs> we had a great time on the way up, but we weren't finished yet. We finally made it to the top of the Via Ferrata. We are at the bridge at the end with amazing views of Mount Blanc. We stopped to hike down, which I'm just trying not to think about because it's so fun being up here. I decided to cross first so I'd be able to get some drone shots of Nina and Jordan coming. The shots I got were crazy. I'll have to show you in the next video. Since we finished earlier than expected, we took our time on our way down, even stopping for a quick photo op. That was just one thing. Oh, yeah. Bro, this is hilarious. Look at this content. Have you seen the hut? Look at that. The sun, flowers. Pull up the baguette pointer. So we went a tad off trail on our walk down, but it's okay. We're almost to the bottom now. As day one was coming to a close, we needed to get a plan for day two. Plan A for tomorrow, we were supposed to go to the ice caves, but it's unlikely that we'll actually be able to get to the ice caves. We could probably hike up to it, but we don't know if we'll get in because it's like off season. So we've been looking for a plan B. I've spent the last 30 minutes on all trails. <laughs> and every time I find a dope suggestion, <laughs> Nina comes up with a great reason why we can't do the hike. Although we escaped the crowd by traveling in the off season, the shadow side was that a lot of the popular attractions were closed. We have this little bakery recommended to us by our Airbnb and be host so we've come here every morning so far for some pastries because we had spent yesterday in the mountains we decided to take a rest day to explore the town what are we doing today we're just wandering it was absolutely mandatory that we went to our favorite kebab place for lunch we took our food to this beautiful park in the middle of town where we ate played cards and napped remember when you were jet lagged yeah i looked at this there's nothing quite like being able to watch the clouds roll by and appreciate all that we have to be grateful for. Since Nina and I grew up in Southern California, we rarely get to experience the changing of seasons. So whenever we get to enjoy fall, we have to kick around some leaves. <laughs> no, like walk kicking. <laughs> Once we had had our fun, we went back to our place. Today has been a little bit slower day out in What's this place called? Yeah, I always want to say Shamanic. We decided to spice some things up tonight. We've been playing our new card game, get that pirate's booty. Wow. We put some wagers on tonight's match. If I win, boys are already going for a polar plunge in the morning, but they have to bring me back breakfast in bed. And if I win, Nina has to come with us and polar plunge. Jay has to be over the top taking photo video for me tomorrow. <laughs> Nina has to give me a foot massage and Jord buys our crepes. Let the games begin. I fortunately won our wager, which meant Jord got to sponsor Nina and I's crepe outing. I did lose our card game, but I'm doing all right because I don't have to pull her plunge tomorrow. So that's all that matters. It didn't take long until we found a shop. We are at the crepe shop. We're trying some butter and lemon and sugar crepes. We're going to see which one's better. The vibes at the crepe stand were high. We especially enjoyed getting to know one of the workers there. Once we connected over skiing, he wanted to flex on us a little by showing us the 1080 that he had just landed. Wooden utensils, not cutting it, but the crepe, incredible. It was a good way to end our last night here in Chamonix. In the morning, Jordan and I were on a mission to see just how cold this glacier water really was. Before we left, Jordan and I needed to get in some freezing cold water, so here we are. That's so deep. <laughs> Four minutes. <laughs> that was pretty cool. It wasn't as cold as I thought it would be. Yeah, I was actually pretty surprised. This was easily one of our favorite Europe stops yet. Due to its stunning beauty and locals only vibe, Nina and I would recommend Chamonix Mont Blanc to anyone who loves mountains and extreme sports. I love it. You're ripping up your prosciutto? <laughs> I was torn between getting American coffee and great coffee. But it was time to head out. Catch us in the next video as we try another rental car and explore the French Riviera.